Welcome here inside TCO Studios. I'm Tatum Everett, and this is Pick 6 presented by KFAN. It's a short week as the Vikings look to bounce back against the Eagles on Thursday night football. So let's get right to question number one. It's from Nate, and he asks, what do players do to get their body right on a short week? Great question, Nate. Viking safety Josh Metellus answers it for us. Sleep. I think sleep is the best part of recovery. It's the most important part. So I think if you get a good night's sleep, you'll be ready for Thursday night game. Sleep does do a body good. Thanks for answering that, Josh. And he and the rest of the team are headed to Philly tomorrow afternoon for that primetime matchup. Which leads us to the next question. It's from Trevor. He wants to know, going forward, how do we fix the mistakes we made in game one? Do we need to add someone to the O-line? Do we need better play calling? A lot of questions there, but voice of the Vikings, Paul Allen, can handle it. Well, T-Mac, fantastic questions here for the pick six. Now, with fixing the mistakes, that obviously is a practice-related thing. I believe Josh Metellus, even a Benton Whitley, eventually will wrap up on those sacks and players won't get behind certain players. And offensively, you know, they, they were lighting it up, man. I mean, the quarterback threw for a big number. J.J. with that 42, so I trust this offense. Uh, the second part of it, adding something to the offensive line, I don't know. I mean, Bradbury got nicked up. Schlopman stepped in. We'll see how the rest of the season works out. And finally, do we need better play calling? Really? I mean, the, the play calling was terrific in 2022. Kevin O'Connell doing it for the first time in his career. And again, we ran up a fair amount of yardage, and I don't think, you know, I will say this. Kevin O'Connell didn't seem like he could really get into a rhythm with the way that game worked, so I feel good about that. Thank you, Paul. I also feel pretty confident about the play calling, but more importantly, this team needs to make sure they play mistake-free football on Thursday. Moving on to question number three. It's a theme of offense that we're sticking with. With the impressive performance of the defense, what seemed to keep the offense from being the offense we saw last year? Was it play calling, game plan, execution? Friend of the show, Fox 9's Ahmad Hicks answers this one. So it's not time to press the panic button just yet for this offense. What you saw in week one was what you normally see from NFL offenses. Them being a little sluggish, their rhythm being off because they didn't get a lot of reps during training camp. You can't replicate game speed in practice. So I think the offense will be just fine. They moved the ball, but of course those mistakes limited them. I don't think that will be a problem moving forward. I think Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, and everyone gets on the same page and they live up to those offseason expectations. Thank you, Ahmad. It definitely was a positive sign to see Kirk Cousins ranked second in the NFL in passing yards. Hopefully we see more of that in Philadelphia. Let's go to that next question. Jason and Hastings has the next one. How can we address the offensive line properly in such a short week, especially against a great pass rush? Vikings analyst Ron Johnson here with the answer. Hey, Jason, that's a great question. The offensive line on a short week already we know Garrett Bradbury is banged up. How can Kirk Cousins help out the offensive line? It's not just Kirk Cousins, but it's going to be the entire offensive staff. you got to shorten up the passing routes. You can't give them that much time to get after you. You know they have some great pass rushers on that Eagles defense. So in a short week, the good thing is both teams are heading into a short week. But you can run some three-step drop stuff, some screens to slow that rush down. And that's the only honest way to help out this offensive line. Uh, there's no magic trick to it. It's basically scheme and how you can slow down that defensive line. At the end of the day, running the ball maybe a little bit more with Alexander Madison and Ty Chandler might be the answer. Thank you, Ron. It is a tough Eagles front. They rank third in pass rush win rate last week, according to ESPN NFL Next Gen Stats. We know it'll be a tough test, those pressures forcing turnovers this last week, which leads us to our next question. After the Bucks game where turnovers cost you the game, how do the coaches or players go about fixing the issue before Thursday? What can they do to practice and make sure those situations don't happen again? Vikings Entertainment Network's Gabe Henderson dives into this one. Jake, if you have three turnovers in any league, doesn't matter the profession, chances are you're not going to win that game. When it comes to the NFL and this Minnesota Vikings team and the three turnovers that they had this past Sunday, there are a couple of things that you can change. But the one thing you can't change is the Kirk Cousins miss snap that Ed Ingram hit out of his hand. Like one, of, That's one of those things where Ed Ingram has done that step 
every single day for the past 10 years, and chances are that has never happened to him ever in his career. So that's just a fluke play. The, the Kirk Cousins sack fumble on Antoine Winfield, that's a play where Kirk, Kirk Cousins just has to get the ball out quicker. He has to be a little bit more savvy in the pocket. I mean, it's just a great play by Antoine Winfield. He read that play perfect. And then that's, last but not least, the turnover, the interception that K.J. Osborne uh, almost caught that Kirk Cousins threw. Uh, Kirk Cousins just has to put that in a better spot. I believe he addressed that in his press conference uh, after the game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I believe Kirk Cousins and this Minnesota Vikings offense will change all three of those mistakes, all three of those turnovers this upcoming Thursday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Thank you, Gabe. That leads us right into the final question of pick six. Lee asks, honestly, what could be done with the offensive and defensive lines? Neither one got any type of rush. Wouldn't a true nose tackle and a better guard change our fate? Here's Vikings radio analyst Pete Bursich with the answer. Thank you for the question, Lee. And yes, adding a guard or a defensive tackle would help both sides of the football. However, it's just kind of like a card game. You got to play the hand that you're dealt. It's far too late in the season to really make a lot of roster changes. So you've got to make the best out of what we have. Our interior guards are still young. Ed Ingram going into his second year, he's a hard worker. Hopefully he'll straighten everything out and get himself on the right path. And defensively, with our new coordinator, I think we're gonna be moving those guys around enough, so we'll make do with what we have. Thanks, Pete. I feel like we blinked and it's already game time again. You can catch this week's Vikings game on Fox 9 or Amazon Prime kickoff set for 715. As for pick six, that wraps up this edition. If you want to submit your questions, you could do so on Twitter at Tatum Everett or at Vikings, and maybe it'll end up on the next show.